10C, adopt a resolution approving cable television services and rates effective July 1st, 2010. Mr. Furpo. Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. Annually, the City Council reviews the rates and services of San Bruno Municipal Cable to consider any amendments. You have before you the staff report, which details my presentation, and I'll be providing you with the highlights and staff's recommendation for your consideration. Over the past two years, as shown in Table 2 of your report, substantial increases in programming costs have occurred. These are the fees that San Bruno pays to various programmers that make up 38% of our cable budget. Almost every channel we offer charges a fee for carriage, and in aggregate, these charges have increased over 22% in the past years. Last year, the City Council adopted a rate increase of 8.5%, which offsets some of those programming fees, but not enough to capture all of last year's increases and the capital expenditures necessary to run a viable business. San Bruno Cable is a member of the National Cable Television Cooperative, which strives to negotiate the lowest rates on our behalf for a majority of our channels. Some programmers that we pay directly require individual contracts. And while we have dropped some channels due to contract pricing disputes, in many cases we have, success, we have been successful in negotiating the lowest fees possible. Despite these efforts, programming costs continue to gradually increase over the course of the various contract terms, and sometimes more dramatically, as in the case of Comcast Sportsnet, creating the basis for our rate increase for video services. As shown in Table 1 of your report, a 14.86 increase for video services is proposed. This video service increase is necessary to fully cover our actual increases in programming costs that have occurred over the last two years. It should be noted that there will not be any increase, uh, increase on the limited basic service. Those are the channels from 1 through 26. There also won't be any increase on internet service as well. During the past year, San Bruno basic cable rates have continued to be priced under Comcast by about 25% as determined by the annual rate survey, which is provided as attachment two in your report. After the proposed rate increase is implemented, San Bruno's cable rate will still be about 7% below Comcast rates at this time, although Comcast generally has a rate increase later in the year. The annual comparison to satellite and AT&T services provided as an attachment five of your report indicates that San Bruno Cable's video packages and rates remain comparable to other local video service providers. San Bruno Cable has led the way in the Bay Area by offering a complete digital cable system before the other cable providers in surrounding markets. We've upgraded our internet service to be able to offer 100 megabits per second downloads in 2010-11. This new internet service utilizes DOCSIS 3 technology and channel bonding. What's channel bonding? Okay. I'll explain a little bit about what DOCSIS 3 is because I throw these terms out sometimes and see confused faces. DOCSIS 3 is a technology that is advanced for internet delivery. And it's a different modem than the one most of you have already and our, all of our subscribers have. And it is, has the ability of delivering uh, more bandwidth to the subscriber. It's done two ways. Currently, we use one channel on our system for the download of data. In the future, we'll be able to use four channels and we'll bond them together, and this new device, this DOCSIS 3 modem that we'll employ, will be able to pick the frequencies of those uh, channels and download more information. It's just a bigger pipe, so they'll be able to download more information. We have that technology, and we'll be implementing it in, in 2010-11 and offering those services. Uh, while initial growth might be slow for those services, utilized mainly by tech-savvy users, all industry indicators point to this service as a future model for delivering and viewing video services. As provided in Table 3 of your report, four levels of services ranging from 20 megabits per second to 100 megabits per second download and rates ranging from $87.95 to $149.95 are proposed. We are using our existing fiber plant and extending new fiber to business complexes to offer commercial services. As you are all aware, we currently provide phone and dedicated internet service to the city of San Bruno and dedicated internet access to the San Bruno Park School District. We completed installation of the infrastructure for delivery of commercial services to our local business community during the past year. 
and will be expanding dedicated internet access and business phone services to the greater business community here in San Bruno. A comprehensive list of proposed commercial services and rates are also provided in Table 4 and 5 of your staff report. These additional offerings to commercial businesses will enhance our viability, deliver cost savings to local businesses, and eliminate the cable fund deficit over the next five years, as shown in the business plan attachment four of your staff report. In addition, in 2010 and 11, we'll be conducting a direct marketing campaign using a door-to-door -door strategy to actively target non-subscribers to ensure customer growth, as well as campaigns for existing customers to ensure <coughs> customer retention. The Cable Subcommittee met on April 9, 2010 to review the proposed service and rates and recommended approval. If approved, the rate increase and proposed new service rates would take effect on July 1, 2010, and as required by law, a 30-day rate increase notice will be delivered and we'll deliver that in the June bills. The rate increase information will also be posted on our website and on Channel 1. <coughs> that concludes my presentation. Take, uh, city Manager and I will take questions. Questions of uh, Steve or City Manager? Michael? Um, through the chair, yes. Um, I had um, initially some concerns about how the how the rate increase was, was being applied. And I know that there was a, a large capital investment that was uh, specifically for bringing on commercial customers and ensuring the viability of the company. And uh, I believe that it, it has been properly allocated, the costs have been properly allocated so that the consumers are not going to see a big increase because of that investment. And um, unfortunately, we have very little control over what we pay for the services that, that, we, uh, that we supply to the customers. Um, I, I did want to acknowledge the, um, the efforts that, that the staff has made to keep those costs down. And uh, it hasn't been easy. And uh, I, I know that it is a difficult job, but uh, it, it is hard for people to justify having to pay more for, for television. But uh, I, I do want the, anyone who's watching or listening to know that um, it, it isn't because we haven't tried to keep those prices down. And, um, um, and, and it does seem that uh, you know it's, it's an expensive business. I was happy to see, uh, just, just another side comment, I, I, I was happy to see that the basic, uh, the very basic service is maintaining its price. I know there are a lot of people on limited incomes and uh, they rely on their television for, for entertainment and information. So uh, at least we were able to hold that. So thank you for, for that effort. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. To the chair. Um, You left the door open with the, you know, with the five, with the, uh, the nine point seven percent increase, and so I, I'd like to hear why it would be um, advantageous for us to go with the proposed, uh, you know, fourteen point eight six increase over just the, you know, the the nine point seven percent increase. I know it includes, the, you know, the deficit reduction, uh, but then I mean we have the all these. Uh, grand ideas of that uh, the, the commercial component is going to you know bring us out of that but uh, and I know it's only a couple dollars it's just it's just under three dollars of difference so there's there's two um, I'll have, have a response to that so there's two issues one uh, the 9.7 as you correctly stated will not cover any of the uh, debt reduction it is strictly for programming costs and uh, fees only so <coughs> It's out there because it's an option, but it's um, not a recommended alternative. Um, to Councilman Salazar's comment regarding the, the, the uh, deficit and the spending that was done for commercial services, those uh, commercial services was a small part of that project. Uh, uh, there was also lots of video projects associated with that too. Uh, we uh, upgraded our, our DAC, we upgraded the boxes, we've added more HD channels. We've done a lot with video, so video really is the major component of that uh, that, that reduction. We bought 20,000 set-top boxes, uh, uh, so there is there's quite a bit of video. So that so that increase, that 14.86 recommended increase, is for video services uh, only, really, and to cover that debt reduction and the programming fees. So the follow-up question is, what? What if we don't? What if what if we were to 
what if the majority were to just approve the 9.7 percent increase? How how would how would the uh, we would be able to cover our would? operating expenses, but nothing towards debt reduction. I think uh, let me refer to if you look in your report attachment three, which is page 33 in your package. Uh, I think you see the net result of either of oh, the options. Geez, right here. It, and yeah, again, we've, pro we've provided you with an option because we recognize that the over 14 percent increase is a very significant amount. I would simply remind the Council that uh, part of the reason that uh, we are in a deficit position and really in, in many respects struggling, struggling to cover the operating costs and the programming cost increases is that it, the rate increase that occurred last year was maintained at an amount of eight and a half percent, where the original recommendation for full cost recovery was at a higher amount. Um, as a result, the bottom line, uh, the, the deficit got bigger, and uh, it, again this year at nine. 0.67 percent, uh, we would essentially break even on costs on a on a year for year basis, but not progress in the direction that uh, we believe has been historically the council's interest. So, uh, we recommend the 14.86 percent, and you you really have an option uh, not just at the 9.67 percent, but uh, we thought it was desirable to give you at least some perspective about what an alt what an alternative rate amount would look like. Okay, thank you. Um, let's say we look a few years ahead and commercial is just doing gangbusters. I mean, we're we're selling phone service to, you know, public agencies all around us and you know, and and uh, you know, it's it's really paying off. Uh, how does that affect our customer rates? How would how would that affect? I mean, would that potentially uh, keep them keep them down, or is it always going to be based on you know the uh, the, the channels, the you know the, uh, uh, the those increases? Well, we know the programming fees are going to most likely go up, continue to go up, and that cost would more or less be borne by our subscribers, our video subscribers who are paying for that service. However, uh, commercial services, if they were to take off um, in the manner that you're saying that they would take off, and we certainly hope they do, um, there would be a, a cost savings for, for, our, for our customers. Okay. Again, if you, if you look at page 34 in your staff report, you see some projections. I realize it's a little bit uh, small numbers and a little bit complicated, uh, but you see at the top of the page uh, total costs for the various components of our service <coughs> delivery, including the, the commercial services, and down at the very bottom of the page, projections over a uh, five-year period, five-year period, um, that show the deficit gradually being resolved through a combination of uh, video side, internet, and commercial service rates. Again, those are projections. So we've anticipated some cost increases associated with programming, um, as well as uh, generating a demand for the commercial services program. So commercial, the commercial program is coming at the right time. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and I will say that the subcommittee did, at some length, discuss just what you brought up: the nine plus or the fourteen plus, and. Figuring the fact that even with 14, we're still very competitive, uh, we might as well just get this done and, and start to get this whittled down. I guess my last comment is, what what do you think? <coughs> what do you think the increase that Comcast will propose? You know, will it will it go up? Will it be closer it's, to 25? I'm sure, it will go up, um, but <coughs> I think it was 8 percent last October. So it'll they'll they'll will there'll be about a 20 percent gap. Their programming costs are going up as well, yeah. so imagine they would be going up. Good for them. To the Chair. Yeah, Vice Mayor. Several things, but in looking at Attachment 5, if I'm not mistaken, 
aside from the basic limited, am I reading this correctly that the other services we're at the high end? As far as basic expanded, digital basic, calculate pack, or am I incorrect? Attachment five, mm -hmm. Council. Uh, page 35. Yeah, I read that a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, Councilmember Medina, this is that's why, uh, there that's why I thought I would ask because I'm sure you two were different. Uh, f first of all, this is a comparison that the City Council asked for last year. We that's correct uh, provided a, a means of comparing what, in some cases, really amounts to apples and oranges as opposed to apples and apples. Uh, but we've done uh, about as, as well as we can. And what you see is there's a variation in this table about the uh, quantity of channels and the variety of mm -hmm. services that are provided. So, um, you know, I guess you could, in, you could interpret it in a variety yeah. of different yeah, ways, we'll but I would yeah, say we'll if you compare it. the services provided or the channels provided um, and the cost, yeah, it, it's kind of a it's kind of a mix, and I would see San Bruno Cable being more towards the middle, perhaps a little bit to the high side, uh, but then you're not comparing uh, cable service to cable service the way we compare when we look at Comcast or another cable service provider. You're comparing to a, a completely different technology, and as the table indicates you have a variety of different costs and charges uh, and contractual obligations associated with many of those types of service direct TV direct TV and the dish for example I I'm probably one of the ones that has the biggest worry and concern as far as uh, the cable I, I, everything else in here I'm, I'm comfortable with with the exception of the cable rates at this moment um, and just speaking out loud, uh, giving my piece, uh, it, it's just we have lost customers as far as cable. Uh, I'm not saying that because I want uh, to, you know, them see me on TV more, but but in reality, over you know, uh, last year I'd say we we've lost hundreds, mm -hmm. not one or two. Uh, it happened before I was driving to the uh, coming to the meeting. There was a neighbor watering the lawn. He moved in a year ago, and he probably won't do that on the night of a council meeting again. But I said, you know, wh what do you have? He says AT and T. Why? I really didn't know much about uh, San Bruno Cable, what it had to offer. Plus, I had AT&T where I, where I moved from uh, uh, as far as the internet and as far as phone. So it was just kind of a package deal, and he, he went with that. Though, probably, as he told me as I was leaving, hey, you know, if there's a better package out there, maybe I would, I would think about it. I always want to save a, save a buck. My concern is, is that people that leave for other services, I think it's very hard to get them back. I remember it was a fact or figure that was given of what really it costs when you lose a subscriber because of having to go out there and earn it and what the true cost is that annually. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was quite staggering to me. And I don't know if you remember what that was or is, but um, it, it's a high number. We've, and we've lost hundreds. And I can tell you, when I walked the streets in 2005, there were not so many dishes. There were not so many other providers. AT&T was not amongst us. In this last go-round, uh, though I walked very little or only to certain areas, the dishes have just tripled, and it's obvious by the amount of folks that we've lost. And I understand that we provide a great service. I think service is critical because to me, even if you're at the same level of your competitors, but if you offer a service level and an opportunity in which to have your problems fixed and people respond in a timely fashion, people are willing to pay equal because it's local and it provides better quality service. That has still been a concern to me because we are taking on so much new technology. I don't know if we have the ability to keep up with these times. We know how diligent the other providers are coming out with the leaflets in the mail and the advertisement on TV. Can we keep up with that? So I have a real concern going up to that percent. I'm not understanding, though the 9.7 was given as a cover the cost, but why not, you know, why, why aren't we looking at a 11.7 or a 12 to meet the objective of covering costs, meet the objective of some deficit reduction, which I, I'm a little confused because when Council Member Salazar asked, the ratepayers are not paying for the deficit, the answer was that's correct, but then the way it's being said again, it sounds like they are. So I'd like to get clarity on that. 
and why aren't we going somewhere in the middle? I just think it, it just gets more challenging for folks, and I can just tell you, garbage, they don't have a lot of places to shop. There's one place in town, and it's a requirement by the municipal code, as we were told, every seven days it's got to be picked up. Here it's a whole different animal. They have options, and there are a lot of options, and they're going to those options. And I understand the potential for the commercial is great and hopeful, mm -hmm. but it's, it's unchartered. And I don't know when that's going to kick off. I'd like to know that. I'd like to know what we have in the pipeline to, to see that that is going to flourish in some way. So anyway, some of my commentary for right now. Well, I can speak to the, the, the rates. If, if it's the pleasure of council to go with a 12.5% increase or whatever you decide, that would just uh, that rate re that deficit reduction would be reduced that that's how that it affects it and the rates paid by these rate increases will go towards that deficit reduction but not uh, but but because there are video components to that deficit reduction that have to be paid so that's so it does go towards that deficit reduction um, and it would if we did a 12 and a half I believe it was a 12 and a half percent uh, it would cut that amount instead of 250,000 to 125,000 towards that debt reduction um, commercial services, where are we on commercial services? We are um, currently, we uh, have two customers out there that are very interested and serious about commercial services. One we actually have hooked up and connected and um, uh, we are charging this person, uh, these, this company for their, their, uh, their service. They're very happy with the service and we hope uh, just by word of mouth and a campaign in those buildings that we're going to pick up quite a few other businesses at, uh, at that location. We have another um, uh, company that's also very serious about not only internet access, but phone service. And we're waiting on these uh, approvals here to determine whether we can go ahead with that. We've already given them uh, what we think are the rates gonna, that are gonna be for that service and they're very interested. So um, we, we've already done some of that homework and some of that marketing just as a test to get, to get out there. We're, uh, expanding our fiber optic network, as I said before, we're expanding it to uh, several buildings in Bay Hill that are not served yet by San Bruno Cable for that, for that very purpose uh, in the hopes of, uh, strong hopes of getting large uh, internet access, dedicated internet access to those, those subscribers. Do you measure anything? You no, know, I would just echo what the staff is saying. Uh, the the uh, businesses that we're talking to and have actually come to us when uh, staff indicates word of mouth. There will that is that is not what we're relying on totally, but we have found that in fact the business that is connected is in a multi-business uh, tenant building. Um, word spreads fast, and this being a very cost-effective option with a high level of service for our business customers is a, is a new opportunity that we think is going to take off um, in a very productive manner. Second customer that we're looking at is a uh, business uh, with as many as 100 phone lines. So again, we're talking to both small as well as fairly substantial businesses and preparing ourselves to move into the Bay Hill Office Park, which is, a, we, we believe, a, ter a terrific business opportunity. Through the chair. Michael. Uh, to clarify what my question and why I was satisfied with the answer, uh, my, my concern was that there were portions of the capital investment that were specifically dedicated toward commercial, and I wanted to make sure that those costs weren't um, being tacked on t uh, to the residential side of it, and uh, that was taken into account, so that's why I was satisfied with the answer. Uh, getting back to um, the deficit reduction, the we did make a major investment in the plant, and I'm wondering, on a going forward basis, uh, is this something we're going to see again in a few years? Is there any sort of uh, reserve, an equipment reserve like we have in, in, uh, in, the, in the general fund for um, replacing equipment, uh, whether it's set-top boxes or upgrading equipment, or should we expect to see another deficit in, in a few years? We have to uh, continue to purchase, you know, the set-top boxes uh, as demand warrants it. Um, those uh, expenditures are accounted for, um, and we're hoping that we are not going to add to the deficit uh, in the next few years. Um, we're trying to pay it down. That's the whole point of this uh, rate increase and the point of uh, 
our operating budget. Um, and so that's that's our intention. Okay. Let me let me add to that a little bit. Uh, there are no uh, indicators on the horizon that it's a substantial investment that we have recently made, both uh, to the for the transition to an all digital platform, which substantially not only enhanced services to our customers but provided uh, uh, massive uh, comp uh, compression of our channels. In, so adding capacity, which allowed us to add, I believe, over a hundred channels in the last um, 18 months or so. The, uh, a, a rebuild or a um, capital investment of that magnitude or of the magnitude that we've recently made to launch the commercial services is not something that is on the horizon. Uh, so we, we are confident that the plant is now situated for the near to long term future uh, for the deployment of the services and the recovery, as the staff has indicated, of the amounts that uh, were not available on reserve and uh, were necessarily expended in order to situate the company to keep up with the demands of the future. And I know that uh, industry-wide the trend is that a lot of people are moving away from, from cable television and we have seen significant rises in internet subscribers, so we're making it up on that side. Uh, we've made the investment on the video side, uh, and, and I noticed that there are some price structures here for the new higher speed internet, and I'm wondering if there is a requirement on the internet side to make investments. Is that going to be covered with the proposed costs uh, without incurring any other uh, plant investment that we need to do on a large scale up front? To the services that we're offering, that we're going to be offering in the near future, no, we, we've made those uh, we've made those improvements. We have that equipment, and so we'll, we don't need to do any other infrastructure uh, improvements at this time for that. We'll be able to offer that level of service that I talked about earlier, uh, starting July one. Okay, thank you. Okay. Well, my my last comment is that I'm I'm just everything's going up, and I'm speaking about you know Joe resident. Uh, who just got his uh, uh, his garbage rate went up a dollar, and this uh, possibly goes up uh, five dollars. Um, what did the what did the water rate go up to, and and gas and all everything else that just keeps going up and insurance rates and everything. So, um, I mean, I know one side of me says it's good business sense, get that deficit down. But then again, I'm looking at the projections. It's still going to take five to six years, you know, to pay that down. Uh, $200,000 versus, you know, nothing this year. Um, if I can, you can convince me that there's going to be just a nominal increase next year. I know there's always going to be an increase, you know, but are we looking at another $5 increase? Are we looking more like at a dollar increase or a $2 increase? You know, uh, those are the things that I, you know, that would get me to say, all right, you know, but I'm just really, you know, and I realize a nine, 9% increase is only a $3 increase versus, you know, it's a $3 difference. So um, this is, you know, you make the decision now and then we forget about it. But I mean, if we make a decision that doesn't increase, then maybe you feel good for a little while. So Steve, <laughs> is the 14% is the plus uh, the major major portion of that from retransmission and from the Comcast situation with the Bay Area and Comcast, you know, California thing and the Univision and all of that. Did, uh, did that skew this whole thing this year? Well, I, actually, the 14 percent increase, 14.86 percent increase, is is uh, to cover the programming costs. Of, like I said, from last year that we did not cover right. and this year, so it did skew that. And also the deficit. So, um, it's yes to answer your question. Okay. Through chair, I'm I'm you know having my and again it's just with the rates and I worry about the future. Um, I would say too that I would be interesting. To, I would be interested to know if the rates go up on July one. I'm sure they will if there's a tracking mechanism that could be used to see 
truly what effect this action would have on the subscription rate, on the subscribers. We know we lose it sometimes with certain programming. Obviously, if we don't get them back, they go elsewhere, and it's hard to get them back. Um, I'm also wondering, you're talking about going to a door-to-door -door campaign, but have we thought of asking those that maybe have left us, those that are still with us, whether you can, I want maybe call it a focus group, come together and, and get some feedback, whether you offer them a couple of pay per views for their time or phone survey or whatever it is. But I'm wondering how, how do we basically reach out and, and tap into what is good about us, what we can improve about us, how we can provide a better service that will have our uh, subscribers retain with us as well as win back others. Uh, I understand we're going to do this campaign, but let me tell you, you know they've already been out there knocking door to door, and you know what what they're doing to try to win over customers, and they're succeeding. And and I don't know that we can compete, and and I wonder even going further down the road, do we need to have some type of a, I won't call it blue ribbon committee, but something that really looks at the viability of the cable department, of where we're at, where we're going, the future, its investments, uh, uh, what it's worth to the city, both at owned or or if it were ever thought of even putting it out. I mean, but, but I wonder, you know, where it's some real technology as far as crossroads and trying to keep up with some very big players that have a lot of money and, and resources behind them. So I worry about today, but I'm also wanting to, us to look down the future too as, as far as some of those things. Yeah, as you, as you mentioned, uh, we are addressing the um, subscriber losses by the campaign, the door-to-door -door campaign, which we were hoping to start this year, but it didn't come to fruition. Um, and we, we, we need to do that. And um, to the point of a focus group, uh, a couple of years ago, um, I did some surveys with um, uh, Survey Monkey, it's called, a program that uh, I was able to put out and get some feedback from people on what they liked about San Bruno Cable, what they didn't like. We did not do a comprehensive one. It was mainly a test market. Um, but that's something we certainly could do. I and mean, I, think, I think that's a, uh, a path we should go on. I agree. Um, One of the issues with um, the competition is that they're taking subscribers from the largest market share in this area, us. So their offer can be really good, at least up front. They make, uh, these, these folks make you sign a two-year contract. So they make their money back over that period of time. And it's tough to get those customers back because it's, it's difficult to change unless you have an offer that is, is, is substantially better. That's what this campaign, upcoming campaign, will do for us. We'll be able to give them a very good offer. We don't make them sign a contract, so they'll be able to get out of their other contracts and, and work with us. And, that's, and at this point, we've, I think we have a, a viable market out there that's, that's gone from us that we can tap and make it a very good uh, imp impression. One final question, mm -hmm. Mr. Furpo. I've known you and I have faith in, in the work that you do in the department. I'm going to ask you very honestly and forthright and bluntly, do you feel that the recommendation from staff, and I, of course it's because it comes from you, but I want to hear from you as to why it should be at the 14 plus percent, not 12, not 9.7. Uh, I, I want to hear from you and your expertise. You've been there a long time. You've done a, a good job in my opinion, and so I want to hear from you. Well, I can tell you that the staff and the subcommittee and uh, in pre previous meetings, we wrestled with this uh, quite a bit. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a large increase. We're aware of that. But we have the deficit that we have to address. And so from a business perspective, again, you know, that's something we, we need to address. If we, if we keep ignoring it, it's not going to go away. Uh, I think that any rate increase that we've done, I've done some analysis on rate increases in the past, and we've, we've taken a 1% or so hit uh, just on rate increases in the past. I think this rate increase uh, will, will take a larger hit. I think we'll take close to 2 or 3%. Uh, it, it is a you know, larger increase. Um, I recommend the 14.86 from strictly a business perspective. It, I think we need to do it. We, we have to reduce that deficit. And it, uh, you know, I, the other recommendation that I gave you earlier was 12%. Um, 
that would give us some money towards a reduction. It's a less of an increase. That's the pleasure of the council. Thank you. And as I said in the subcommittee, we wrestled with this for quite a while. I guess the bottom line for me was, and maybe I make it too simple, is if you're going to lose some people because of a rate increase, are you going to lose them because of 14 percent or 12 percent or 9 percent? People say rate increase, I'm out of here, or I'm sticking around. I don't think the percentage, that 2 percent here or there, really makes, really makes a difference. I think uh, you have to look at the, at the bigger picture, I think, in the, in the, the paperwork here and the discussions we had over the last number of months. They're really able to justify it. We're doing a good job. We're still in the market, and I think the campaign, especially uh, the the door-to-door -door campaign that we're going to uh, embark upon, and the commercial services that uh, that you're really working hard on. I know it's really hard to get off the ground, but now we're out there. Are going to make a difference. It's just my feeling. So. Yeah, and I'm 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 struggling with it, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, I mean, it's it's a recovery, and and. I'm just going to be hard pressed to uh, to vote for something as as, as large as a five dollar increase uh, any you know any time in the future. But uh, I realize what uh, what this organization has gone through in the last you know the last couple of years and stuff. And so uh, I'm yeah, we've made good sense in, in this in this organization. And uh, as much as the vice mayor may think that uh, you know we we are losing, but we we've, we've got a lot. We've got a lot of satisfied customers. We've got a lot of people that would probably be a major uproar if we even considered um, putting it up. What you, you know, in your terms, putting it up. Uh, I, th I think it's a value that it is a municipally run, you know, organization. So, um, with that, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to vote for the increase, the recommendation. Would you like to introduce the resolution for adoption? If there's a, no other discussion, I'll uh, introduce the resolution. Council Member Ibera. Aye. Council Member Salazar. Aye. Vice Mayor Medina. Aye. Mayor Ruang. Aye. That was tough. <laughs>